गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर ऋषिकेश पांडरीकर सेकंड ईयर रेडियोलॉजी रेसिडेंट एट क्रिस्टन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस कराड माय टॉपिक ऑफ ई पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन इज रोल ऑफ सीसीटी इन इवैल्यूएशन ऑफ प्राइमरी रेट्रोपेडोल मेलिग्नेंसीज सो द एम ऑफ द स्टडी इज टू डिटेक्ट एंड कैरेक्टराइज रेट्रोपेडोल मासेस बाय द सीटी मॉर्फोलॉजी इंट्रोडक्शन प्राइमरी रेट्रोपेडोल मासेस मे बी कैटेगराइज्ड एज सॉलिड और सिस्टिक एंड रेंज फ्रॉम बेनाइन टू एग्रेसिव इन बिहेवियर MDCT is currently the imaging modality of choice for evaluation of morphology, internal characterization, assessment of the disease extent, and involvement of vessels. It also plays an important role in compartment localization of the masses into five retroperitoneal spaces, which include anterior perineal space, posterior perineal space, perineal space, central vascular space, and iliopsoas space. So, place of the study is Department of Neuro Diagnosis at Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, Karad. Type the type of study is cross-sectional study. Period of study is from first of August two thousand twenty three to first of July two thousand twenty four. Sample size includes forty cases. Inclusion criteria is patients with clinical presentation of abdominal pain and EEG findings suggestive of abdominal mass lesion. Patients underwent contrast and CT protocol on Siemens sixteen slice CT scanner. So there are three types of primary retroperitoneal neoplasms arising from mesoderm mesoderm origin, neurogenic origin, and it can be germ cell sex cord. From mesodermal origin, it can arise from adipose tissue, smooth muscle, connective tissue, striated muscles, blood vessels, perivascular epithelial cells, interstitial cells of Cahal, primitive mesenchyme, or it can be miscellaneous. From neurogenic, it can arise from nerve sheath, sympathetic nerves, stroma finger tissue, from germ cell and uh, and sex cord. It can arise from germ cell and sex cord stromal tumors. So now we'll see one by one. Case one shows CCT shows a large conglomerated homogeneously enhancing soft tissue density lymph node mass. With central non-enhancing areas within, uh, which are necrosis, which are seen in retroperitoneum, surrounding fat standing is noted in bilateral gerota's fascia. So this is a case of retroperitoneal lymphoma. The lesion is causing early mild homogeneous enhancement on arterial phases. There is no evidence of delayed enhancement. Lymphoma is the most common malignant retroperitoneal neoplasms. It typically presents in, as an infiltrative homogeneous hypovascular masses around the aorta and IVC. Extending between and encasing structures without compressing them, rooting aorta sign or CT angiogram sign can be appreciated on cross-sectional imaging due to anterior displacement of aorta and IVC. It is important to identify lymphoma on imaging because, unlike other retroperitoneal tumors, surgery does not play a role in the management of lymphoma. Case two shows a large ill-defined, lobulated, solid retroperitoneal mass that is hypoattenuated to the muscle with central uh, tiny specks of calcifications. It is showing heterogeneous enhancement on venous and delayed phases. So this is a case of retroperitoneal ganglion neuroma. The lesion is showing no enhancement on arterial phases. The lesion is causing 360 degree encasement of abdominal aorta, proximal celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, and origins of both renal arteries. There is anterior displacement of the portal vein, head, ascent process, and body of pancreas with loss of fat planes. So ganglion neuromas are derived from the primordial neural crest cells that form the sympathetic nervous system. Pathologically, they are composed of ganglion cells, Schwann cells, and fibrous tissue. They do not contain neuroblast, intermediate cells, or mitotic fibers, and necrosis is not a feature. Ganglion neuromas are most commonly arise in the paravertebral sympathetic chains of the posterior mediastinum or retroperitoneum. Paravertebral ganglion neuromas frequently extend through the neural foramina to involve the epidural space of the spinal canal. Next case shows a large exophytic heterogeneously enhancing tumor arising from the walls of the IVC with areas of necrosis within. So this is likely a case of leiomyoma sarcoma of IVC. Primary leiomyoma sarcoma of IVC is a heterogeneously enhancing tumor that arises in the walls of IVC. It can be predominantly intra or extraluminal. It is the second most common primary retroperitoneal sarcoma. The tumor is large and appears to be embedded in the IVC, indicating that the IVC is the site of origin, which is called as positive embedded sign. The presence of extensive necrosis in the retroperitoneal mass with contiguous involvement of vessel is highly suggestive of leiomyoma sarcoma. The, the differential diagnosis includes benign thrombus or angiosarcoma, while a benign blind thrombus. Does not show any contrast enhancement. Leiomyoma sarcoma of the IVC enhances on both early and delayed contrast in the enhanced images and causes more expansion of the IVC. Treatment includes surgical resection with in IVC ligation. Next case shows axial CCT shows a retroperitoneal mass lesion having strong intense enhancement in arterial phases with a clinical history of episodic headache and hypertension. So likely a case of paraganglioma. Axial cut shows hypervascular lesion with internal areas of necrosis presenting dense heterogeneous arterial and enhancement with subsequent filling in the portal. Phase and delayed washout to reach capillary network. 
Tumors that arise from protein cells of adrenal medulla are called as pheochromous atomas, and those that arise in the extraadrenal location are referred to as paragangliomas or extraadrenal pheochromous atomas. The most common site of paragangliomas in the abdomen is, is the organ of Zucker candle, located in the paraortic region near the origin of inflammatory artery. Avid contrast enhancement is often noted because of their hypervascular nature. On titubated MRI, paragangliomas show diffuse high signal intensity known as light bulb sign. Case 5 includes uh, CCD shows a large predominantly fatty mass in the right abdomen causing anterior rotational uh, displacement of the right kidney. Bowel is displaced uh, the left and anteriorly. More in inferior axial and coronal images shows multiple enhancing nodal areas of soft tissue attenuation in large fatty mass. Also a well-defined soft tissue bulky heterogeneous soft tissue component in the fatty mass is seen. So this is likely a case of de-differentiated retroperitoneal liposarcoma. Liposarcomas are mesenchymal tumors arising from the adipose tissue. They are divided in five types, which can be well differentiated, mixoid, round cell, pleomorphic, and de differentiated. Well differentiated liposarcomas appear as well defined fat containing masses with thin septa. They show little or no enhancement on post contrast study, uh, re reflecting the paucity of the intratumoral vessels. De differentiated liposarcomas are characterized by additional presence of focal, nodular, non lipomatous region greater than 1 cm in size. Calcification is an important sign of the de-differentiation. So here are the results from the study. Most commonly, lymphomas are seen having a percentage of 30% followed by liposarcomas, paragangliomas, ganglioneuromas, neuroblastomas, lymphomasarcoma of the IIVC, teratomas, and non-neoplastic retropendal fibrosis. Most tumors are amyotomal in origin followed by neurogenic followed by germ cell sex cord tumors. Uh, the age of uh, distribution is along the 6 to 70 years of age group. Next is the discussion. CT plays an important role in characterizing tumors by determining location, origin, composition, enhancement pattern, effect on adjacent structures, and distant metastasis. The characteristic imaging findings like fat and calcifications can help uh, can help narrow down the uh, diagnosis and therefore reduce treatment planning. In this study, four cases showed areas of fat attenuation within the lesion, among which three were cases were benign and one was malignant. Thus, presence of fat were most commonly found in the benign lesions. Presence of necrosis was most commonly found in malignant tumors. In this study, 18 cases showed necrosis, out of which 16 were malignant and 2 were benign, which included pheochromocytoma and parag paraganglioma. Vascular encasement is also a feature of malignant tumor and determines the surgical receptibility of the tumor. In this study, 5 cases of IBC thrombus were noted, which are further characterized by intraluminal blind thrombus, showed no enhancement, while thrombus caused by IBC, of IBC shows enhancement. Enhancement patient also shows a crucial role. So, conclusion is primary retropelial masses are rare group of neoplasms. They pose a diagnostic dilemma on imaging due to their varied and overlapping appearances. Imaging features in combination with demographic and clinical information help in, help in narrowing down the differential diagnosis. CT has the advantage of being easily available and has a short equation time. So, peculiar imaging features of the masses are fat containing primary retropelial masses include liposarcoma and teratoma. Masses with calcification include teratoma and de differentiated liposarcoma. Hypervascular retropelial mass uh, include paraganglioma. Heterogeneously, an enhancing mass includes composite paraganglioma or ganglioneuroma, and mantle like uh, primary mass is a lymphoma. So, these are my references. Thank you.